Julia, thank you so much for being here today. I have never cooked a holiday turkey. My mom is always the one that prepares the turkey, cooks it on holiday meals, but she is quarantining this year. So I'm quickly going to try and get up to speed. What is a brine? Yeah, I'd be happy to help you out with that. So a brine is what we do in prepping our meat for the cooking process. You can still use all those traditional methods of cooking the protein, whether you're going to fry it, you're going to roast it, but this brine is what we do to prep. Okay. All right, so everybody needs to start here. Yes, it's a great way to start. So a brine really helps out in bringing moisture into that meat mm -hmm. and adding some texture and then also adding flavor. Okay. So it's simply a solution. It's going to have salt and water and some vegetable stock. That's what we're gonna to use today. Okay. So we have vegetable stock out here. You can make your own, but there are really good options now at most grocery stores. So if you need to save a little time, go ahead and just stop at the grocery store and get your own vegetable stock there. I must admit, I never considered making my own vegetable <laughs> broth, but that's an option for some folks. Maybe next year. Maybe next Maybe year. Maybe next yeah. year. Um, yeah, so we have the solution there. Um, we'll add some salt in a little bit, and then you really can be creative with what you want to add to your brine. It's basically a bath that you're going to put the turkey into. Okay. And you can add whatever flavors you want. <laughs> turkey bath. Yeah, it's easy to think about it that way, right? Uh huh. Yeah. So we have rosemary, we have some tarragon, we have thyme. Um, other holiday related herbs are sage, um, or oregano, rosemary. Um, those are some go-tos if you're looking for those holiday flavors. I have been using an arrow garden and I can tell you that our particular one has oregano and it has rosemary and it has uh, sage. So I probably would go with those. You're ready to brine and you didn't even know. I did not know <laughs> how ready I am for this. <laughs> there are some really good health aspects too with using herbs in your cooking. So they're really rich in antioxidants. Same thing for the ginger. Oh wow. If you didn't want to use ginger, you could throw some citrus in there. Mm -hmm. um, oranges, maybe lemon would be good alternatives. Um, we're gonna use a coconut sugar today. Um, it's a little lower in glycemic index, which is nice if mm -hmm. you're watching sugar. Um, we also have our peppercorns, and then we have all spice berries here. Um, we're just gonna combine this all together. So there isn't this need to really make sure everything's cut perfectly and looks nice oh, and is ground great. perfect. <laughs> yes, no no grinder needed. That's right, that's, that's right. News. So we can just uh, have some fun with this and really explore different options as you do more and more brining. Um, brining can be done on pork, it can be done on turkey, it can be done on chicken, it can even be done on vegetables if you're vegetarian. So a lot of um, ways that you can use a brine. All right, so now our brine has come up to a boil. From here, we can do a few things. We could either set this aside and let it come down to room temperature, or you can take this over to your protein that's on a bed of ice and pour it over that turkey or chicken. 